Hey there kids, um, welcome to another math video. This is Eureka Math, grade five, module three, lesson 12 homework. And this is kind of a giant lesson with a lot going on. I highly recommend that you go watch the problem set video that I made. It is really great showing all the different strategies you can use. I will be using from the homework helper method two. I find that this one is really very straightforward really easy. Um, it does involve the addition and the put back. So hang in there with me and hopefully after six or eight or 10 problems, you guys will be experts at this particular method. We do kind of jump around with the word problems because they're asking you to use a couple different methods. So that's okay. Let's get into it and you will see what I'm talking about. Okay. And thankfully we don't have to use any area models or number lines or anything. The objective of today is to just subtract fractions greater than or equal to one. Subtract fractions, that's what we're doing. So <clears throat> my favorite method that is really easiest for you guys is to take the whole number and subtract the whole thing for in one step and then put back this fraction. Okay, so we're gonna focus on this, put back and don't forget about it. Why is this easiest? Because uh, a few lessons ago, it, it was really, I think this is what, lesson eight. This was really very easy. Most all my students got this method. They're like, oh yeah, I totally see. So when you take the whole number and you can remove everything without having to worry about the denominators, it's really much easier. Three minus two is one. Then you continue subtracting because subtraction moves continually down the number line. One minus one third. So you make that answer <clears throat> from this whole subtraction. Now this is the answer of the minus two thirds from three. We just have to put back the one fourth that we didn't touch. And so this is still part of the whole. That's the only thing I'm doing here with the put back is putting back what three and a fourth had at the beginning so that we get the right total. Now we have a simple addition problem where we have to get a common denominator. Hopefully you know it's 12. You can get that by multiplying your denominators. Four is my scale factor for three, so four times two is eight. Three is my scale factor for four, so three times one is three. 8 plus 3 is 11, and you have your answer. Okay, so I this is like the least amount of work and the best explanation that I can give you. So let's move on to B, take 3, and subtract 2 and 3 fourths. Now 3 minus 2 is 1, but 1 minus 3 fourths continues to get smaller. If it's in four parts and you take away three of them, you have one left. Now put back the two thirds. <clears throat> I don't know if you noticed, but this is very similar. So we're gonna have twelfths for our denominator. These are the other scale factor. This one we have three here and eight here. Add them up and get 11 twelfths. So I hope you're getting it. Let's keep going. I just really want you guys to try this new method. Some students will say, but I really wanna wrap everything up. You know, this is the way I used to do it. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11, and then subtract 4 times 2 is 8, 9, 10, 11. Then you get the common denominators and go from there. You can totally do that. That is up to you. How you solve these, which method you use is up to you. I really prefer this method, taking everything away um, from just the whole number. I really think it's very easy. You can like it too. So 6 minus 4 and a fourth. There's your two, but continue taking away the fraction, which gives you the next lower number, and then make the whole with the what's missing or what's the difference between four and one, it's three, and give yourself your label. Now put back the one-fifth. When we put back, we need to have a common denominator. Don't forget your whole number. Twentieths for four and five. This is my opposite number is my scale factor. Five times three is 15. Four times one is four. One and 19 twentieths. This one, six minus four and three fourths. Six minus four is two, but continue taking away. That gives you 
one. It's one less than this whole number, and then make the whole, three minus four, or four minus three is one, and then there's our label, put back. We need twentieths again, very similar. How many twentieths will we get? Use the opposite number as your scale factor. Five for here, 12 for here. It's now an addition problem that's pretty easy. Okay, let's do this one here. Take five and subtract four and a third. Five minus four is one, but continue taking away one third. That gets you down below one into the next <clears throat> uh, between zero and one. Make yourself a little fraction of two thirds and put back two sevenths. Um, have a common denominator and use the other number as your scale factor. Add and you get 20 21st. Okay, again, eight minus the whole thing subtract, continue subtracting. You're going to end up the number right below this, or the digit right below 5 is 4, then 7 minus 5 is 2, sevenths. Now put back. I forgot to put my arrow. There we go. Or just a line at this point. <laughs> okay. Now, common denominators, because we're adding, don't forget your whole number. A lot of students will be like, whoops, I forgot that. I'm so focused on getting those common denominators. The other number is your scale factor, so 3 times 2 is 6. 7 times 2 is 14. Add them up, 4 and 20, 21st. Okay, I hope these are good. I hope you guys have already done your work and you're really just seeing that you did everything okay, or if my way to you it seems kind of cuckoo, uh, I hope you got the right answers so that you can kind of just check against um, what I have. So 18 and 3 fourths minus 5 and 7 eighths. We're going to do 18 minus 5 and 7 eighths. 18 minus 5, 13 minus 7 eighths. So you continue the next uh, digit below 13 is 12, and then make the whole with 1 eighth. Now put back the 3 fourths that we had in the beginning. We need a common denominator, and I am not going to use 32. I do not like to multiply and get something huge. I want the lowest common denominator. 4 goes into 8 evenly two times, so I'm going to leave 12 and 1 eighth alone, and I'm going to change only this fraction to eighths by a scale factor of two. So I'm going to multiply four by two to get eight and two times three to get six. Now I have an equivalent fraction for this one and I didn't need to change that one. Add them up and get 12 and seven eighths. So this is, I promise this is the easiest way. Let's do another one. 17 minus two and five eighths do the subtraction here, minus 5 eighths, and then <clears throat> next number down, and then make the whole, and then put back. Okay, common denominators are required. Between 8 and 5, We've done enough of these to know that we just have to multiply these two and get 40. So um, use the other number as the scale factor. Get 15 on top now and 8. And 15 plus 8 is 23. And there's your final answer, 14 and 23 fortieths. I hope you guys like this. Thumbs up, right? Two thumbs up. Okay, let's move into the word problems. We've got Tony. He wrote the following. Seven and a fourth minus three and three fourths equals this. And this is one of those, let's check our method here. So is he correct? So if I have seven and a fourth, I'm going to write the whole thing again so I can do what I want with it. I'm going to take my seven minus three, and I'm only going to subtract the whole numbers. This is one of those other methods. 
Okay, that means the one fourth is still part of my whole. But now that I have subtracted the whole number, I just have to take away what's left. I didn't touch this part and I didn't touch this part. So this is what we started with, the whole thing. And this is like step two. Now you can certainly use this method on any of these problems or in the future on a test or whatever. You can just do the whole numbers first and then work on common denominators and doing subtraction. The problem with a lot of these was that the first fraction was too small to subtract the second fraction. So I didn't take you through that opportunity to kind of fail with this. I just said, hey, I know the easiest way and it's to take this whole thing. Um, so anyway, is this correct? Yes, it is. <clears throat> it says draw a number line to support your answer. So real quick. Uh, we need to start over 7, so we're going to have, um, you don't necessarily have to have 0, but sometimes it helps me space them out. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If this is 7, then label just the whole numbers for a minute. And if we have fourths, then let's call this 7 and 1 fourth. That's where we're going to begin. Now, if I take away 3 and 3 fourths, I can do 3 whole numbers to subtract, which is going to put me at 6 and a fourth, 5 and a fourth, and 4 and a fourth. Because I'm, I'm starting above 7. I'm starting at 7 and a fourth. So this is minus 1, and this is minus 1, and this is minus 1 as we move down the number line because it's subtraction. But we still have to take away three fourths more. And so if each little fourth is labeled uh, with a tick mark in between, three tick marks in between the whole numbers because there are four spaces, that's what these are. This is one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Okay, I have to take away three fourths more. So I would say, all right, here's my little one, two, three. And then I can land here. <clears throat> um, I don't know what else they want us to do here. So it seems like this is good enough. Yes, it equals this. Uh, I could look at four and a fourth, which is right here, and take away the three fourths to prove it. One, two, three. So it's like, I'm getting to four and a fourth with my minus three in one step, and then I just do my little uh, minus three fourths or the three uh, one fourths. So it's all you have to do is really just show that you understand you're taking away one fourth three times or the minus three fourths, and you're going to end up right here on three and a half both times. Okay, so I think that's good enough. Let's move on to the other word problems. Ms. Sanger uh, blended eight and three fourths gallons of iced tea with some lemonade for a picnic. If there were 13 and two fifths gallons of beverage, how many gallons of lemonade did she use? So uh, this is a great place for a tape diagram when they talk about parts and a whole. So we've got the gallons of iced tea, some lemonade, and beverage as the total. Try to get used to making these because they can really help you see the parts and the whole. Iced tea. It. Ha. Eight and three fourths gallons of it. And then some lemonade, which is a mystery. <clears throat> How many gallons of lemonade? When you set this up, and hopefully you see this is the whole and this is a part, this is a subtraction problem. Minus what we know. So my favorite way, again, rewrite and take the entire uh, subtrahend, the second number, from the whole and do it in two steps. So 13 minus 8 and this remainder or the difference minus the fraction. Then you don't have to worry about denominators. 
It's the next lower number because we're going below five into the fours and then make the whole. It's the difference between these two. Put your label. Now, what do we have to do? We have to put back because we didn't account for that. So we have our four and one fourth plus two fifths. I need to have a common denominator for my addition problem, which we know is 20 so We've done enough of these now to know that four and five make 20. The other number is the scale factor. Multiply by your numerator and the scale factor. And then add. And we get 4 and 13 20 How do we label it? Uh, how many gallons of lemonade? Gallons of lemonade. And there's your answer. Yay. Making progress. Okay. All right, so a carpenter has 10 and a half feet of wooden plank. He cuts off four and a half feet to replace the slat of a deck, and he also cuts off three and two thirds feet to repair a banister. He uses the rest of the plank to fix a stair. How many feet of wood does the carpenter use to fix the stair? Again, sounds like a, um, a tape diagram. So let's put this all together. And we have our 10 and a half feet of wooden plank. And we've got the four and one fourth feet for the deck. And we've got three and two thirds feet for the banister. We also have the stair. And that is unknown. So we have all the parts that make the whole. We do know these two. So what I would like to do now, I've had students do repeated subtraction. So they do 10 and a half minus this minus this. I do not like to do that. <laughs> I like to put together everything that we're going to subtract. So I'm going to take my four and one fourth plus three and two thirds. And I'm going to get a common denominator for the fractions, and I'm going to put it all together. So I'm going to take 4 and 3 and make 7. And then I'm going to have two little fractions with twelfths. These, is, these are my scale factors. So 3 times 1 is 3, and 4 times 2 is 8. Add them up, and we get 7 and 11 twelfths. Now this is for the deck and the banister. Now I know how much was used already which helps me to take my whole and subtract what's used already. Okay, now this is again, just like what we've been doing. You can take your 10 minus seven and 11 twelfths all in two simple steps. 10 minus seven is three and three minus 11 twelfths is the next lower number two and one twelfth. Don't forget to put back. That's your final step here. Oh yeah, click subscribe and come back again. If I already have a common denominator for two, which is 12, why not just use six twelfths? Just change this one fraction. You don't have to change it to 20 fourths. Why would you make all that work for yourselves? So use the lowest common denominator possible. And we end up with two and seven twelfths feet used on the stairs. Yay! I thought it was going to be so long, and that was really not bad. Oh, are there more? Shoo! No more problems. Okay, that's it for today. So I hope it was helpful, and I hope that you guys really can use this new method, and I hope you're experts at it. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.